Halloween has arrived in Disney World big time. A popular ride in Epcot may have a new way to skip the line. Genie Plus gets more confusing again. And Disney Springs is serving vegetable ice cream. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Now, if you want to know all the latest Disney news, you have come to the right place. We've got a lot of news today, new merchandise to share, snack hacks, and of course, that Q3 earnings call out of Disney's executive tier. We've got a lot of info from that. Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party is back. Last night was the kickoff of Halloween season in Disney World with the very first MNSSHP. Magic Kingdom's Halloween party has been on hiatus since 2019, but the party has returned full force this year. Well, sort of full force because lots was rained out last night. But there were Halloween fireworks, the Boo to You parade is back in action, and the Sanderson sisters appear live on stage at the castle. Are the ride overlays, trick-or-treating, specialty snacks, and exclusive entertainment worth the $109 to $199 price tag for a four-hour event? Well, we've got a full recap and a full review coming to the channel very soon. But if you can't wait until Monday, you can catch up on all the details from last night over at DisneyFoodBlog.com. Now we've got more changes for Disney Genie Plus. Planning on park hopping and using Genie Plus? Pay attention because this new update will affect you. As of now, this change only applies to the regular Genie Plus Lightning Lanes, the $15 per day option, and not individual Lightning Lanes, the individually priced a la carte option. Previously, guests with park hopper tickets who purchased Genie Plus were able to book Lightning Lanes in their second park at 7 a.m., the time when you're able to make your first selection. The Lightning Lane return times would automatically populate with 2 p.m. or later options. Since that is the earliest you can park, hop right now. With the new rule, guests with Genie Plus will have to wait to book a lightning lane at the park they're hopping to until the return time reaches 2 p.m. or later for all guests. And this is regardless of whether or not they're park hopping. So if you're booking a lightning lane for the park you're hopping to later, you'll have to wait until the next earliest available window is 2 p.m. or later. So this basically negates the thing I put in a video a couple weeks ago that I was so excited about. Now, if you're confused, let's look at an example. Let's say you purchased a park hopper ticket and Genie Plus, the regular version. You decide to spend the first part of your day in Animal Kingdom and want to hop to Hollywood Studios later and book a lightning lane for Tower of Terror. Under the old rules, you'd be able to immediately book a 2 p.m. Tower of Terror lightning lane at 7 a.m. when guests can make their first selection. However, with the new rule, if you want to book that Tower of Terror Lightning Lane for when you park hop after 2 p.m., you'll have to wait until all Tower of Terror Lightning Lanes prior to 2 p.m. have been booked. Essentially, this levels the playing field for all guests, regardless of whether or not they've got a park hopper ticket and plan on heading to a second park. But it also means the guests who are park hopping will now have to keep checking Genie Plus times for their second park as well as their current park. The news you've all been waiting for, Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique reservations are open again. Yep, reservations are now available for Bibbidi Bobbidi in Disney World and Disneyland. On August 25th, Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique is finally reopening after being closed since March 2020. This place is for guests ages 3 to 12 to receive their own magical makeovers in the Disney parks. And when it reopens, young guests will be able to choose from new costumes featuring some of Disney's newest heroes and heroines. So if you've got a little one that really wants to do this experience, make sure you book a reservation in advance on the Disney World website. While the locations in Magic Kingdom and Disneyland will be opening, keep in mind that the locations in Disney Springs and the Grand Floridian Resort and Spa will be opening at a later date. All right, big news out of Epcot. Soren is testing a single rider line. Yep, there's now a single rider line testing over at Soren around the world. We went by to check it out and the line wasn't open at the time because the regular line was too long. The sign also wasn't up since it was closed. The single rider line is only testing right now, so it will probably only be available during slower periods. We'll keep an eye out to see if it becomes more permanent or if it even sticks around after the testing phase. Now, using a single rider line has been one of DFB's tips for getting through rides faster, usually. You are only given a seat on the ride when there is an opening for one person, so the line for single riders could move really fast or really slow. Also note that you'll be split up from your party if you choose the single rider line. Testing a single rider line at another popular Epcot attraction could help with long wait times in the future. New transportation details have been added to My Disney Experience. Disney's introduced a transportation portion in the My Disney Experience app where you'll get to look at information about the Skyliner, minivans, parking, Disney buses, and more. Right now, the info seems pretty general, but we did get a pop-up informing us that some transportation may be unavailable during severe weather, so this part of the app may update to let you know if the Skyliner or boats are not running. 
It seems that Magic Band Plus may be pretty popular and Disney is running into some stocking issues that may affect your upcoming trip like it did mine. Magic Band Plus has been not shipping in time for some upcoming trips. I personally received an email about this. My notification was sent to me in relation to a Magic Band Plus I ordered through my Disney experience for a hotel visit that was supposed to start a couple days ago. According to the notice from Disney, they are unable to fulfill our Magic Band order in time for our arrival in Disney World, and because of this, the Magic Band Plus order will actually be complimentary. If you receive a notice and you've already paid for a Magic Band Plus that won't arrive in time, you can expect a refund and for the Magic Band to still ship to you free of charge, so you can wear it once you get home from vacation. So Super useful. Disney's also working to correct the issue by sending a $50 Disney gift card digital that can be used toward the purchase of another Magic Band Plus at Disney World or toward any other purchase. Not everyone may be impacted by this. I know a lot of people who are going in September have already gotten their Magic Bands, but it is possible that your Magic Band Plus order won't arrive in time and you may receive a similar email, so definitely refresh that inbox. Now we've got some big news out of the Q3 earnings call that Disney recently held for their investors. CEO Bob Chapek has made a statement on Park Pass reservations. Whether you love it or hate it, Disney's Park Pass reservation system seems to be here to stay, at least for now. During the Walt Disney Company's third quarter earnings call, the CEO commented on the system and how it has benefited the company. Chapek stated, we have a park reservation system which now enables us, on the fly, to change whatever factors we need to in terms of ticket packaging that we want. Years ago, we didn't have that. We published prices by the quarter and that was all the flexibility we had. In terms of park demand and capacity, Chapek said, our reservation system really does a great job of spreading demand. If we see any spikiness, we can smooth that in a way we couldn't before. And we're real pleased we did that. Based on these comments, it doesn't seem like Disney has any plans to change the reservation system anytime soon, though no official announcements were made during the earnings call. And Disney Plus has announced price increases for ad-free streaming. Yep, Disney announced that the current ad-free version of Disney Plus will increase in price by 38% to $10.99 per month and will be called Disney Plus Premium. Right now, the price of Disney Plus without ads is $7.99 per month. This will be replaced by Disney Plus Basic, which will feature ads and will start out at the same price as the current no ads plan, $7.99. The change will take place on December 8th when the Disney Plus Basic plan is introduced. For current Disney Plus subscribers, you'll have to choose between paying the same price and getting ads or opting for the more expensive ad-free plan to continue streaming without interruptions. The 2023 Run Disney Springtime Surprise Weekend runs from April 13th to 16th, 2023, and it's just been announced that the races are all Pixar-themed. The 5K will be Cars-themed, the 10K is Monsters, Inc., or you can run the Toy Story 10 Miler. You can complete all three weekend events, the 5K, 10K, and 10 Miler, as part of the Springtime Surprise Challenge. Runners who take on and complete this challenge will receive a Nemo-themed medal. Now, we're still awaiting the official opening of the new restaurant on Disney's Boardwalk, but we saw some promising signs, literally. Signage out front now indicates this quick service restaurant is called the Boardwalk Deli, no longer the Boardwalk Bakery. A cast member did say that the spot will be open on Monday, August 15th, which is when we saw operating hours listed for the restaurant. The operating hours are currently 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and we'll be bringing you the full review as soon as it opens. This month, Salt and Straw is bringing back their Veggies You Crave series. Five different vegetables are being served in these ice cream flavors over there at Disney Springs. The first is the returning carrot cake batter with praline hazelnuts. This flavor is made up of slow roasted carrots, which have been blended into a spiced ice cream. Of course, those candied hazelnuts should add a bit of crunch, and there's even a swirl of cheesecake frosting. Next is a spinach cake option made with chocolate tahini fudge. The spinach is baked into a golden green cake that is then covered with chocolate chocolate frosting, and crumbled into vanilla ice cream. To top it all off, it's mixed in with house-made tahini fudge. Another option is the green fennel and maple flavor. Now, fennel might not scream ice cream to you, but Salt and Straw tends to know what they're doing when it comes to creating flavors. This one is made with fennel bulbs that give a black licorice flavor usually. Now, these have been steeped in maple, which adds some sweetness. I know, we aren't done yet. Next is the charred corn curd with cotija and tahini. We tend to love this flavor combo, so can't wait to see how it plays out in ice cream form. To make it, torched corn is blended into a curd, which is then mixed with a house-made mayonnaise ice cream. After all that mix 
and they add in a touch of lime and tahini, and they crumble some delish cotija cheese on top. We're gonna see how that goes. And last but not least is the red chili curry option with macaroni lime crispy rice. And guess what? This option is vegan. This flavor is made with a combo of red chilies and coconut that were inspired by Southeast Asian curries. Salt and straw roast together chilies, lemongrass, ginger, and a few more spices with a splash of macaroni lime. After doing this, all of that goodness is mixed into the coconut cream and then topped off with crispy rice florentines that are loaded up with macaroni lime. And for those of you who don't know what macaroni lime is, which I did not, I looked it up, I googled it for us. It's basically a lime that is native to Southeast Asia, and they usually don't eat the lime, they eat the leaves of the lime, from what I can tell from Google. If you are from Southeast Asia, can tell us more about this. I'd love to see it in the comments. Thank you. All five of these options can be purchased now at the Disney Springs and Downtown Disney locations, but get this, they can also be ordered online. Here at Disney Food Blog, we are all about the Disney snack hacks, and we found another one for you. Not too long ago, we shared our full review of the walking taco served at Pecos Bill Telltale Inn and Cafe. Basically, it's a bag of Fritos scoops topped with ground beef, Beef, yellow rice, black beans, cheddar, jalapeno, tomato, and sour cream, all tucked into a bag, aka Frito Pie. It's a simple option with lots of ingredients and was pretty tasty, but there was just one problem. It did not have enough cheese for our liking. Seriously, where is the cheese? Now, during one of our recent trips to Magic Kingdom, we made our way over to Pecos Bill Tall Tale Inn and Cafe and ordered the walking taco, which cost $10.99 on its own. Then we took things to the next level by ordering a side of queso dip for a dollar. Yep, the queso dip is just one dollar over there at Pecos Bills. The queso just takes it to a whole other level, adding another layer of flavor and creaminess to the whole thing, and it also gave it more of a full-on nacho vibe, which we really liked. We used our entire side of queso because hashtag science, but you could probably get away with just adding about half of it if you're just looking for a hint more cheese. But as our reporter said, why live your life with just hints of cheese when you can have a whole delicious pile of it? Joffrey's kiosks around Disney World are serving up seasonal pumpkin coffees as of yesterday. This includes the pumpkin pie latte, pumpkin game changer, and caramel apple chai tea latte. And if you've been following the saga of the mouth-numbing drink made famous by Oga's Cantina in Galaxy's Edge, you'll be happy to hear the fuzzy tauntaun has returned to the menu, at least on the West Coast. Supply chain issues meant that Disney couldn't get a hold of all the ingredients for this one, especially those buzz buttons. But now it's back in Disneyland, and we'll update you if we see it return to Hollywood Studios in Disney World. Now, check out this new Cinderella Castle Spirit jersey for Disney World's 50th anniversary. We found this over at the Vault Collection at Main Street Cinema in Magic Kingdom. This spirit jersey is also available on Shop Disney, so you don't have to go to Disney World to get it. It's the same price in both the parks and online, $74.99. As you can see, Cinderella Castle is on the front and Walt Disney World is on the back. There's also the Walt Disney World logo on the sleeve. We found most of the Enchanted Tiki Room Mickey Mouse, the main attraction collection in Disney World back in July, but something was noticeably missing, the ears. They finally appeared, priced at $34.99. We found them in the Emporium. They are covered in a green tiki-inspired print and have a pretty big hat in the center with an embroidered Jose and some feathers. The side of the ears has the Enchanted Tiki Room logo and on the back you'll find the 50th anniversary logo. Now you can definitely fly thanks to the Mickey Mouse, the main attraction, Peter Pan's flight collection. We spotted this series online, but now it looks like some of the items have made their way to the Emporium in Magic Kingdom. You can snag this Peter Pan's flight lounge fly backpack for 85 bucks. The Mickey pin is $29.99. If you're a collector, you might want the collectible key for $29.99. And of course, the Mickey Mouse plush for $34.99. We haven't spotted the Peter Pan's flight ears in the parks just yet, but you know we're looking for them. Over at Creations in Epcot, we found the Figaro and Cleo Dooney and Burke collection from Pinocchio. The collection's pattern features a white background with brown accents and designs of Figaro trying to get to Cleo. The collection includes a satchel for $2.98, wallet for $1.68, a camera bag for $2.28, and a large tote for $2.98. If you or someone you know is a big Pinocchio fan or a Disney cat or fish fan, let them know. We don't see merchandise like this very often. Now, is The Nightmare Before Christmas a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie? No matter where you stand on the classic debate, you can start preparing for the Jack Skellington season with Shop Disney's new merchandise collection. First up, you got two pairs of ears. The Sally faux leather ears have Sally's iconic patchwork fabric print and an off-center burlap bow. 
Now, Sally is embroidered on the side of the headband, and the headband has a non-slip velour interior. You can order them online for $29.99. But Sally isn't the only character who got her own ears. Check out this Jack Skellington faux leather pair. These Mickey ears are bowless and have a 3D-looking version of Jack on one ear. And the black faux leather will match most outfits, but it's going to look especially great with your Nightmare Before Christmas Disney bound. Get a pair of these for $29.99. Bobble Bar recently released some new pairs of earrings and bag charms, what they call keychains. First up, we've got some classic Mickey jack-o'-lantern earrings. These ones are covered in stones that make an orange ombre effect with a green stem. They're 48 bucks. You can also get these adorable candy corn Minnie Mouse earrings. These ones have Minnie wearing a candy corn witch's hat with yellow, orange, and white gemstones. They are also 48 bucks for the pair. Can't decide which character is your favorite? Get this Halloween party Disney earring set and then you don't have to. For 44 bucks, you get four earrings with the characters all dressed up in their Halloween costumes. Perfect if you want to mix and match. You'll get Mickey as a vampire, Minnie with a giant pink bow, Daisy as a witch, and Donald as a pirate. And finally, what's Halloween without a Disney villain? You can get these Maleficent earrings for 48 bucks. These earrings are made to look like Maleficent's head, with her horns and her face bedazzled in light green stones and dark red lips. Oh, and you know what would go great with those Halloween earrings? Our brand new exclusive pumpkin vibes, Spaceship Earth Tea in our merchandise shop. Head to merch.dfbstore.com to snag yours. It really is turning into a bestseller. Now, if you want even more Disney news, be sure to sign up for our newsletter with the link in the description below. You'll get all the latest news sent straight to your inbox for free. And if you don't follow us on social media at Disney Food Blog, you totally should. Thanks for listening, everyone. And thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.